morning and welcome to Rising. We have a perfectly adequate show today, I think. It is fine in most ways. <laughs> Have I'm, a little I'm bit more optimism, it. Robbie. Underselling Have it. Have a little Actually, bit more optimism than that. Great guests, great <laughs> subjects. We're we're vibing. We're ready to go. It's going to be a great day. I can feel it. Indeed, it is. And we've got some very interesting news up top today. 2024 independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. said again yesterday that former President Donald Trump's team asked him to be his 2024 running mate. The statement came hours after a pro-Trump PAC called Make America Great Again, Inc. launched a website attacking RFK Jr. as a radical liberal. Kennedy responded on X, quote, President Trump calls me an ultra-left radical. I'm so liberal that his emissaries asked me to be his VP. I respectfully decline the offer. I am against President Trump and President Biden can't win. Judging by his new website, it looks like President Trump knows who actually can beat him. Kennedy says Trump uh, says Trump's team first approached him about being the VP in January. I, I would not take that job. I I'm flattered that President Trump would offer it to me, um, but it's not something that I'm interested in. Did he reach out for his uh, team? People from the team have reached out to me. Trump's co-campaign manager, Chris LaCivita, challenged RFK on X yesterday, calling him a lefty loony that would never be approached to be on the ticket. Now, it's no secret that both Democratic and Republican parties are feeling the heat from the slew of third-party candidates in the 2024 race, including RFK Jr., as well as Jill Stein and Cornell West. A new piece in Mother Jones makes the case that none of these candidates stand a chance in becoming president, but could play a key role in bringing Donald Trump back to the Oval Office. But while liberal outlets like Mother Jones are making the case against third-party candidates, it seems like the Trump campaign may be aiming to exploit them just a little bit, not by just allegedly floating RFK Jr. as a VP pick, but by exploiting leftist frustration with Joe Biden's energy uh, uh, policy. Now get this, leftists are accurately pointing out that domestic oil production is higher than ever, and they're complaining about the environmental impact. Now Steve Bannon was quoted as saying, Stein is furious about the oil drilling. The college kids are furious about it. The more exposure these get, the better it is for us. But at the same time, as MAGA World is aware of Biden's record energy production numbers and attempting to exploit them, Trump is claiming that Biden has killed America's energy independence and has waged a war on American energy. Meanwhile, things are looking up for President Joe Biden for once. He saw his highest approval rating since November yesterday, climbing to 43 percent in a new poll from the Financial Times and the University of Michigan's Ross School of Business, marking a four point increase from the same poll taken in March. All right, the RFK Jr. news is pretty interesting. Uh, do you believe him? Do I believe him about what? That the Trump team reached out. Oh, to oh. To be VP. Oh, yes. <laughs> I absolutely believe that Trump surrogates were interested in having him on the ticket. Um, for one thing, Trump is searching for a VP. It's not obvious who it's going to be. Um, it's clear that RFK Jr. could actually shore up support he needs from aspects of the right who are frankly dissatisfied with Trump on COVID, of all things, mm. who think um, he was he was the lockdown president, he was the mandate president, et cetera, even though he never, he said he doesn't ever want to require the vaccine, but he is associated with some of the, um, that kind of stuff on COVID. Um, RFK Jr., uh, there was some reporting uh, recently that he had asked Tulsi first to be his VP, and she turned him down. Um, there's also been reporting, I think in just the last 24 hours, that again, finally it's done. He is not interested in joining the Libertarian Party, or that's not going to happen. I saw that headline again. I know we've gone back and forth with that headline like 18 times in the last two weeks, but it looks like he is running uh, his own uh, independent third party candidacy, not going to join the LP. Um, but I think this is, um, I, I think this, in terms of the Trump VP news, I, I think. This is a great card for him to always be able to play, frankly. And we say, oh, you're making fun of me now? Well, you wanted me on the ticket not that long ago. Right. But in this case, we have Trump campaign staffers coming out and explicitly denying that the offer was ever made. So either RFK Jr. is lying or the Trump team is fully fabricating, perhaps embarrassed that they've been exposed as reaching out to someone who was running as a Democrat just a few months ago to join the Republican ticket. Yeah, I 
I think that is the case. And obviously, we'll never know unless there's some email somewhere. That would be great if there was to forward, oh, here's where we asked, here's where we put in writing that we wanted RFK Jr. on the ticket. Probably that was just, that was a meeting, that was a, 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 phone call. a conversation that was not recorded. If it's otherwise, that would be interesting. So we'll never know for sure, but um, do I'm you, not, I don't discount it at all. Do you take uh, RFK Jr.'s argument um, do you, do you credit his argument that the reason that Donald Trump is turning on him now, um, using him as part of his ads, framing him as a lefty loony, is because he does see him as a real threat to his campaign? Yeah, he's taking votes from he's taking votes from both categories, um, and and also he's also attracting voters and supporters who, frankly, might not be gettable by other by either Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Um, I think he speaks to a lot of disaffected people in this country who think. Things have gone wrong, and neither Joe Biden nor Donald Trump are the right people to to fix it. Uh, so I'm I, I'm skeptical that he's you know playing a s obvious spoiler effect one way or the other. Maybe that will get clearer in time. I also think it's fine if he does because if you can't win those voters over, that's on you. That's not somebody else's fault. We shouldn't just have a system where we have to pick between the these two. Two options that even even support even Democrats say they don't like their option. Even Republicans, a lot of them say they don't like their option. So he's in the race. That's the reality. Um, I think obviously Donald Trump and conservatives are going to be reminding um, their voters or RFK interested voters on the right that in the past he has called um, the NRA a terrorist organization. That um, he wanted to jail climate deniers or polluters, those kinds of things, that he supports affirmative action and student loan debt forgiveness, they're going to be reminding right-leaning people that he holds a lot of actually progressive economic views or has in the past. Um, meanwhile, Joe Biden team uh, is going to be reminding their voters that um, that he they're going to be saying he's anti-vaccine, that he's a conspiracy theorist, that he ha was peddling racist stuff about where COVID came from, all of that stuff. So this is this is the game the RFK Jr. team is in for. Yeah, speaking of the kind of attack on third parties, which it seems now that uh, Donald Trump is engaging in, um, kind of aligning himself with other establishment actors who very much want our political options to be limited to the Democratic and Republican parties. There is an interesting um, uh, game, if you will, that's being played by folks in the Trump camp like Steve Bannon, who are saying, I know very well that, Don that uh, Joe Biden's energy production is at record, high at record highs. Uh, Barack Obama uh, bragged about making America the world's biggest energy exporter. Uh, now his VP, former VP, has exceeded even the, those records. This is something that feels like a betrayal to many people on the left, given that Biden um, ran on and really touted the um, kind of climate uh, anti-climate change provisions and build back better at the same time that he largely wiped them out with his energy policy. So that being said, conservatives who like a strong energy policy, who like to drill baby drill, are simultaneously on the stage with uh, it from the, the pulpit that uh, Donald Trump occupies, claiming that Joe Biden has not actually achieved that, that he is actually destroying the energy policy at the same time that people in MAGA world like, Joe, uh, the, uh, like Steve Bannon are going around saying, Saying, well, it's good for us if the leftists who know the truth about the matter and are upset about it are able to fight this battle from the other side. What does this say about the information war and about the credibility of the Republican Party if we know that these actors fully are aware that Donald Trump, sorry, that, that Joe Biden rather, Freudian slip, that Joe Biden is effectuating their energy goals, but they are still so willing to represent to their base that he is acting in the opposite way. Well, they should just say to the base that when Republicans are in charge or if Donald Trump gets to be president again, going to drill baby drill even harder. They're going to tap that well more aggressively. They're going to um, deregulate um, nuclear, make it easier to build nuclear facilities. They're going to do all the, of those the things. Question, quite the question I'm asking, right? Okay. The question I'm asking is, how should the voters feel about being so actively lied to about what the current state of energy policy is? And how can you have an expectation that Republicans in an office are going to do anything differently or, or what, what they're going to do at all, given that they are not being truthful about the current state of the energy policy? I mean, yeah, if I were them, I would just say uh, Joe Biden has not actually been beholden to 
uh, climate change, progressives, anti-civilizational forces, but who knows whether he would be in his second term and you need to put Republicans in office to make sure we can still um, have fuel to put in our car tanks and that kind of thing. Yeah, this is a problem for democratic messaging as well because uh, you hear this all the time when you listen to a show like Pods of America, some of these liberal outlets that express frustration that Joe Biden isn't getting credit from conservatives for having record high energy production at the same time that they want leftists to fall in line and vote for him, even though he has dramatically betrayed his promises to them on the environmentalist front. And I think the, the fundamental problem here does seem to be that there are parties, the Democratic Party in particular, seems to be more interested in courting independent and right-leaning voters than shoring up the base that actually got Joe Biden elected to begin with. And that is an issue not just with respect to um, energy, but in a lot of other sectors where they're leaning into the immigration discussion. They're leaning into the tough on crime discussion. And they've really forgotten that they used to offer, the Democratic Party used to offer positive, affirmative, popular policies on issues like labor and the environment and education and affordability questions. So have they gotten themselves into a situation well, I don't know. where we they just... can't truthfully and clearfully message because they're so worried about who in America might not be sympathetic to any given message. I mean, I don't know. The race is tightening a little bit. Biden's, um, his uh, his numbers versus Trump in the swing states have gotten a little bit closer. Um, we're, we're getting to a place where this is not such a runaway right now in front of, uh, on behalf of Donald Trump at all. So I don't know, maybe that very strategy is working. Well, I think the fact of the matter is Biden being Biden, Trump being Trump, and Biden being the incumbent, the numbers being what they are, are still a disaster. And I think even liberals acknowledge that him showing some incremental improvement here is very far from where they would like to see themselves. Well, that's for sure. More rising after this.